Welcome back to No Nostalgia Filter. Angela picked up a better penis. Oh, it still doesn't work. My uh, penis still doesn't work. Nope, never mind. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Fight a mole. Everything's wonderful. I'm really glad that without knowing about these moles at all, I tried to start the uh, failed joke of three equals five. And now there are five moles, but all of them are number three. <laughs> I, I think that um, I think that I was really successful. It's a sign. Buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> you don't have any people. Oh, no. Do I have some magnet? I do. You have magnet. Magnet is surprisingly good, actually. Uh, three. Well, better than doing nothing. Remember, he has a shield. Oh, I guess I should jack it. Yeah. Fortunately, you don't have any PP restorers, so... How many moles have you actually killed? Uh, oh, this will be three. the fourth. Okay. I spy with my little eye. There, that's better. What did it say? Flash? Oh, fuck, 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 yeah. Flash. Click, click, click. Oh, no, uh, it's dead. It's dead. Great! Great! I guess you can flash. Mmm. Mmm. Let's flash. Where's... Fl oh. I've never yeah. used it. it. It does status ailments and stuff. Um... It would really be useful is if you had flash beta, because that could insta-kill it. Do you have any more life noodles? No, I don't think I do. That's not great. Yeah. And Shira has no PP. She has enough to do another freeze, I think. She could also, another thing that she could do is on big groups of enemies. Yeah. She could use the her multi-suck. Her multi-suck? Her multi-suck, and she can multi-suck. Yeah. Be the Dallas multi-suck. <laughs> freeze alpha will kill it. Yeah. Yep, Freeze Alpha killed it. There you go. I suppose I should take my exit mouse and go revive Yespa. They got so much hit, they, they got so much experience. Well, if, you, if you could just get the one last mole, you should be fine. Is there not a, uh, this isn't a your sanctuary? This is not a your sanctuary. Luck capsule. And a platinum band, ooh. Yeah. Oh, that made me flash back to Final Fantasy XV. <laughs> Because of the platinum demo, it increases your defense. You told me earlier that they recently changed the Final Fantasy 15. Um, uh, the yeah, the, the UI. menu. It's gonna be really weird because by the time this episode comes out, it will be after the Final Fantasy 15 release. Mm -hmm. Um. So uh, everybody will already know whether or not it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, they are changing the UI a couple weeks out from release, which just does not seem good policy. Well, the UI in the Platinum demo was hot garbage, hmm. but the point is, why are you releasing a demo with unfinished user interface? That's not the purpose of a demo. Yeah. What I feel like what's happening lately with, like, these demos of, like, video games that have long development cycles is that instead of actually being demos, that is, things that are meant to convince us to purchase the game, um, they're just... They're basically treating us as video game testers that you don't have to pay. Mm. It's uh, the potential audience is pre-playing the game and then saying this doesn't work and this does work. And they're going, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll fix that. Yeah, like, it, like, like it's free QA testing. Yeah, that's yeah. like, like you actually have to pay QA people. You have to pay video game testers. It's a career, you know, because you have to have like a, a critical, you know, like understanding of what does and doesn't make a good video game. But with this public outsourcing, it's like, well, the fans know what they want anyway, right? So I mean, they'll just sort of, as a loud screaming crowd of a thousand voices, they'll just tell us what we should be putting in. Part of the problem, though, is that gamers have no idea what they want. Yeah. <laughs> like, not to be an asshole, but gamers uh, very rarely understand the intricacies of good game design. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a... There was a... Uh, the Mega Man X7 is a great example. People constantly wondered what Mega Man X would be like 
in the third dimension. Uh, it turns out that it sucks. It like sucks real bad. Um, everybody always wants something new or cool or interesting, mm -hmm. um, and they don't think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Time to Leroy Jenkins. Uh, they don't really think about what that means for the mechanics of the game. I mean, look at uh, how many people have uh, requested stuff like Goku and Marvel vs. Capcom or something like that. And it's like, sure, I guess you would fit the fighting system, but like, don't you understand the concept of like Marvel versus Capcom? You know? Yeah, like it's just. Um, actually, one of the uh, weirdest situations. All right, I'm exit mousing. I can't. I can't deal with this. Uh, We're not doing good. Too much. Too much stress. All right, we're gonna we're gonna revive Yespa, but anyway, so with what? Uh, with well, with sleeping, and then um. Okay. Um. <laughs> with. I guess we have to go all the way back to foresight, don't we? <sighs> Maybe. Mm. Well, you laughed when Yesp died. I was saying that if you could just get to the end, that Yespa's absence wasn't going to actually matter all that much. Right, you have but, one well, more mole, and then the next place you have to go to is Forsyth anyway. All right, well, then we'll just go back in. Uh -huh. He could just be dead and not get any experience points. I'm going to get a bunch of experience points soon anyway. Um, the duck's running away, and then I engage the fucking noose, and then the duck's like, oh, wait, I want to see this. I want to see this fucking shit. I want to see how this plays out. Um, when I was getting my start in the convention scene, we did a panel uh, based on Kingdom Hearts. It was shortly after Kingdom Hearts 2 came out. Um, and we basically did all, like, this was pre-Tumblr, so we did all the Tumblr stuff for people, you know? We, we did frame by frame watchings of all of, of all the trailers and you know uh, obsessively linked uh, every piece of information we had to try and figure out what the story was or at least what the next story was um, and uh, we opened it up to Q and a at the end of the um, uh, at the end of the panel and all, all the cues we got How were... could it engage battle with Yespa? Yespa's dead! Uh, he's, he's unconscious. He's non-conscious. He's non-con. He's dead! <laughs> I, I, I really can't get the hang of this menu system. I don't know what it is. Um, sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh... So yeah, so all the questions we got were like, do you think that they're gonna have a Naruto... Uh, world in Kingdom Hearts 3? We were like, no. No? And they were like, well, if they did have a Naruto world, how do you think they would interact? And I was like, oh. Write, write, write your own fanfic. Yeah. <laughs> like, but like that, like, that's the sort of feedback you get from rando gamers, you know? Um, and like... Then, then people are like, well, obviously you ignore that feedback. And I'm like, really? Obviously? Like, like it's like, like, what, how do you know what feedback you need to ignore? You know, someone, someone says they uh, want a game to be harder. Someone says they want a game to be easier. Who do you listen to? You know, like, who, get, who gets ignored? Who's, who's obviously the correct person here? Mm -hmm. um, the answer is fucking no one. <laughs> I, I love when you go on your uh, video game industry rants, like old man yells at Cloud. <laughs> um, okay, like so, Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. So that is like, a joke. Here, here's the thing. Um, there is nothing that will make you hate gamers more than having to please them. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> 
Like, uh, I got into the video game industry because I really wanted, like, this was this was a, a pastime I loved. This was, I thought the video games were art. I thought that they were an amazing sport, like, when it came to esports. I thought it was a, they were an amazing way to build community. And I thought gamers were some of the most industrious and interesting creative people that I knew. Um, then I worked in the industry and I realized that gamers are all assholes. I think you were, went this way. Um, uh. Oh um, yeah, I can't, I returned this way from the one mole. Yeah, right, so. Ga gamers are all like entitled. So I mean, that, now we're gonna have everybody like 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 unsubscribe from us. But they they are the most entitled group of people that I know. They feel like every single game in the universe needs to be tailored to them and only them. And as soon as something anything is made in any game that uh it caters to some other fan base they throw a shit fit and they whine at you uh and for a while i'm just like what what, what the hell do you want everyone's different you know like every single game is trying to cater to everybody that's what the the industry is mm -hmm. you know like i can't tell you how many people have uh i got a chick Yay! How I like I slit open this snake's belly and retrieved, you know, its last meal. <laughs> Still alive. Uh, um, I can't tell you how many people have like signed stupid petitions, you know, thinking that they're gonna change anything about video games. Like like the people who are signing the petition for Pokemon Go, they're like petition Niantic to put the step system back in. And it very well might be in by the time that this uh comes out, but like, do you think that, that they're just choosing not to do that? Like, is that what gamers actually think? Do you think that they're just that there's just some dude in a top hat with a snidely whiplash mustache at at the top of a golden spire at Niantic going, ma ha ha now they'll never be able to find that precious Pokemon. Ha ha! It's Monotolian, it's mo it's Monotolian yeah. and it's Toadies. It's like, it's like no, that Niantic is a small studio that was an offshoot from Google, and they are doing their goddamn best uh, to get the right to get to update Pokemon Go in a way that people enjoy. And people constantly complain. They're like, "But they made so much money," and I'm like, "Yeah, but it takes time for that money to be able to be used for stuff. And for that matter, the designers don't get to choose how the money is used. Like there, there are other people who handle the budget." And when you have a huge influx of money, that huge influx of money doesn't go immediately back to the uh, the programmers. You have to, you know, pay the investors their cut, you know, or I mean, they might just have stocks, but sometimes they actually have a cut of everything that's there. You have to pay Nintendo, you have to pay licensing fees. Like, there's no reason for companies out there to purposefully screw you. Like, what, 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 what's the point? Why does everybody think that there's some crazy conspiracy to prevent good games from coming out seems dumb everybody think there's thinks there's a conspiracy for like everything that they don't like about the world yeah like like there's people like the illuminati is sitting in a huge circular room going how can we make it certain that 15 to 30 year olds hate video games just like the hall like a, like a all of like, all right. I've been down here, and there's the, I've killed moles down here, but I, I'm looking for the fifth mole, and this is unfortunately right. the problem so, is I had to come back in. So here, here's the deal. How yeah. about we next time on No Nostalgia Filter, okay. and we pick it up when you kill the fifth mole. Okay. Yes. Um, did fine. you get a new exit mouse, by the way? No. <sighs> Shame. Ding, ding, ding. Shame. <laughs> ding, ding, ding.